Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are concluding an amazing series of studies on the book of Daniel. I hope you've been with us for the whole series. If you've missed any, go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch the entire series today from dust to stars, from res death, resurrection to glory. It's an amazing future that is ours through faith in Jesus. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School today and welcome to our team. Glad you're here. It's going to be a great study. We're praying that God would guide. There are still some things in Daniel 12 that are a little challenging for us. But one of the lessons that we've learned in our series is to see the big picture. That is that there's a most high God who rules over the affairs of history and he is working out his divine purpose, which is ultimately the plan of salvation, saving us as his redeemed people forever. So it's good news we're going to study together today. But before we do, I just want to say thank you for being part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And here's a note from Bob. Thanks for writing from the Netherlands. Bob says, hello, brothers and sisters in the Hope Channel studio. Hello. hello Bob. As a family, we enjoy Hope Sabbath School. My wife and, I's wife and I use input for our Sabbath school at our church in Amsterdam North. Your approach gives us the feeling that we're joining with the whole team. I'm afraid that your studio is too small for all of the <laughs> participants on this beautiful planet. That's true. By the way, we're in over 200 countries around the world. That's why we're glad that your team of 13 brothers and sisters is a good reflection of all the beautiful people in the world. Amen. Take a look at each other. You don't all look the same. <laughs> we come from many different countries and backgrounds, and, and, and that's what Bob's saying. It's good to see that we're all part of the world family of God. We thank God for Hope Sabbath School and all of the team. Be blessed and stay blessed. Well, Bob, thanks for writing to us from the Netherlands. Uh, it's good to hear from you, and God bless you in your ministry there. Here's a note again from Jamaica. We have a lot of Jamaicans, Nicole, watching Hope Sabbath School. That's right. I think we must have hundreds of thousands just in Jamaica. That's right. We listen to Hope Sabbath School on a regular basis. As soon as my husband, who had a stroke some years ago, hears your voices, he says, don't change the channel. It's Hope Sabbath School. <laughs> We're learning so much from your spirit-filled Hope Sabbath School team. A special thanks. May God continue to bless you all. In close, find a small donation. Well, thanks so much for writing to us from Jamaica and for your prayerful support. Here's a note from a donor in Montana in the United States of America. Some of you lived in Montana at some point. Keep up the good work. Now, this is interesting because many people who watch Hope Sabbath School get involved in, in ministry, which is what God wants. Over four years ago, four of us felt led to start a small group to reach out to missing members. Mm -hmm. People who used to walk with Jesus, mm -hmm. used to be part of a spiritual fellowship, but they're, they're gone. Mm -hmm. The first year saw over 100 visits by our small group, and two people were baptized. Amen. God has continued to bless this tiny group. Each member gives back to the group and teaches. Hope Sabbath School is really a help to us uh, to feel capable to lead out. Thank you for all that God provides. And the donors sent a gift of $100 to help Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to send a gift back to you. I won't mention the name. A couple there in Montana. But we want to send a gift back and say, we're going to be praying for you and your small group. That is a ministry that is blessed by God. Thoko, Thoko, Thoko Zile is the full name, but Thoko writes from South Africa and says, I'd like to thank you for Hope Sabbath School and especially the theme songs because that's the best way I and my daughters learn to memorize the Bible. Amen. The lessons are the best way to start our week. I was glad to be introduced to the Seventh-day Adventist faith in 2004 and I was baptized in 2008 and I've never looked back. Amen. Amen. Thank you for making the Bible study so simple and straight to the heart. We love your team. Well, Thoko, thanks for writing to us, and God bless you for not looking back. 
Didn't Jesus say something about not looking back hmm. when you decide to follow him? One last note from Kabwe. Kabwe in the great country of Zambia. Lots of Hope Sabbath School members in Zambia. My name's Kabwe. I'm a Sabbath School teacher at my local church. And I like your approach to the study of the Bible. I've adopted the same approach and everyone is enjoying my class and eagerly looking forward to the next week. Yeah. The class is growing each Sabbath. My 10-year-old daughter, Natasha, always enjoys singing the scripture songs along with you. She sends greetings to Jason. <laughs> oh, Jason, would you wave to Natasha? She's 10 years old in Zambia and to the rest of you. <laughs> May God continue blessing your ministry. Well, Kabwe and Natasha, we are thankful that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And actually, Natasha, 10 years old, we need you to help us sing our theme song. It's taken from Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. If you don't have it, by the way, you can download it from our website. But let's sing it together now. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changes the times and the seasons, he removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with Him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. And He changes the times and the seasons, He removes kings and raises up kings. Wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. I always remember someone telling me if they were ever asked a difficult question from the Bible, they would just say, I think I'll ask Jesus that question when I see Him. And that's a good answer, isn't it? Because if we study all of the Scripture, but we don't plan to meet Jesus with joy. 
we've missed everything. Mm -hmm. As we study Daniel chapter 12 from dust to stars, mm -hmm. we're going to see that God's greatest desire is that we be part of that redeemed throng. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's pray the Holy Spirit will guide us in our study today. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this amazing book of Daniel. You inspired the prophet Daniel first as a young man and throughout his life to record faithfully messages given by you, not only for the blessing of his people in his day, but for throughout the history of the, the plan of salvation, you have blessed those looking forward to the Prince of the Covenant, the Messiah, Jesus, who would come. And for us now living in the very last days of earth's history, this book is so relevant. So as we study from Daniel chapter 12 today, May your Holy Spirit be our teacher. May lives be transformed, blessed forever, is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Daniel chapter 12. If you have your Bible open to that chapter, we've got uh, 13 verses. That's a lot less than the 45 in chapter 11. But there's some powerful insights. And so let's begin with verse 1 of Daniel chapter 12. And Pedro, would you begin our study today? Yes. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands, watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Now we're going to come to what the book is, but that's the most important message of Daniel, is that God wants us to be part of those who are delivered. Amen? Amen. But Michael stands up the great prince. Where have we heard of Michael before here in the book of Daniel? In chapter 10. Okay. He comes to the aid of Gabriel, Gabriel. who is a covering cherub, but needs some help. Because a, 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 a force opposed to God described as the prince of Persia, not talking about a, a, a human monarch there. There's a spiritual battle going on, and Michael comes to the, to the aid of, um, of Gabriel. But, but he's also called the great prince. Christian, when you hear that, the great prince, that's also Daniel's language, isn't it? Where, where, where do you hear that great prince language? Yes, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, he's referred to as the chief prince. Okay. The chief prince. Is there another verse, though, that you can think of that's important in speaking about the prince? Any, yes, Travis. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Would you read that for us? Sure. We've been studying chapter by chapter. By the way, while you're finding that, I want to speak to our Hope Sabbath School family. We've got a great series on Daniel and Revelation chapter by chapter. Go to hopebiblestudy.org because we're not done with our study just because we're finishing this series. Hopebiblestudy.org is a free Bible study series for you. But da Daniel 9 and verse 25 speaks about the prince. Would you read it for us? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. So is it possible that Michael is none other than Messiah? Is that possible? It is. Awesome. What does the name... We've got to be careful because some people might get confused here, right? Because he's called the archangel, right? What does the name Michael mean? Anybody know? Christian? It means who is like God. Who is like God? <laughs> El is the, the... You've got El there, Michael, right? Who is like God? Um, that's a significant name, by the way. Um, archangel. Uh, what is that? Does that automatically mean that that Michael is a created being, uh, Pedro. Well, we see that the, the word angel in the Bible is described as not only as a heavenly being, but also as humans and God. You know, God is the angel, the, the messenger of God. Okay, so the word angelos in the Greek and, and in the Hebrew, uh, the word translated angel can mean messenger, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, ought, because angels are created beings, right? Mm -hmm. Both those who are still faithful to God and those who revolted against God uh, they're, they're created. We know that because it speaks of Lucifer from the day you were created, right? Mm -hmm. 
But uh, Michael, someone might say, well, it can't be Messiah, Jonathan, because we do not believe that the Son of God is created, right? Mm -hmm. The Messiah is not created. He's from eternity past. In the beginning was the Word, Word. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. was God. That's the one who became flesh and dwelt among us. So he's from eternity past. Jonathan? Uh, just the, the multiple times in the Old Testament where you see the, the angel of the Lord uh, used in language that obviously uh, hints at this being, uh, being worshipped, being um, considered to be um, God, um, so that that, that that tradition is already laid out in Scripture. Uh, maybe not tradition, but that, that pattern, right? Sorry, yeah, By the way, in Revelation, when there's a real angel that someone tries to worship, the angel says what? No, no, don't, don't do it. Do <laughs> worship no. No. Worship God. Worship. Yes, Christian. A very inter interesting insight that I've seen is that in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, Joshua is confronted by the commander of the army of the Lord. Yep. And that word commander and prince is actually the same Hebrew word. Mm. And so that, that gives us uh, an insight as well. All right. Uh, I think it's in the little book of Jude, which only has one chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jude, verse 9 that Michael appears again, right? I think that's where he's called the archangel. Is that right? Could someone find that little book right before the book of Revelation? Let me know when you found it. Nicole, looks like you have it there. So I don't have to say chapter 1 because there's only one. So Jude, verse 9. Right. The New International Version says, But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And we could go to Deuteronomy 34, where it says the Lord buried him, and speaking about Moses, but we don't have time for that right now. But I think that's the only place where Archangel is mentioned, Archangel and Michael together, the leader, the commander, Christian, you said, of the angelic host, all right? He stands up. And it's over, right? I mean, there's something very significant about when the commander of the angelic code stands up. Travis. And, and I would also like to point out that Malachi 3.1 refers to Jesus the Messiah as a messenger. Okay. All right. So a messenger um, can apply to a variety of people, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, are we not also mm -hmm. messengers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the three angels flying in the midst of heaven are not actually angels, they're people. <laughs> and they're flying because it's urgent. Right. And they're crying out with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we want to continue. The significance of Michael standing up. Mm -hmm. what does, what, what's the significance of Michael standing up? Is, is, this, uh, is there some significance to that? Help me someone. Hmm? Standing up. Sean? Um, one thing to consider is that you can stand up in a, in a judgment type of sense so mm -hmm. you understand this is it I'm I have the final say um, when it comes over to to the great prince who stands watch over the sins of your people mm -hmm. the other one could be that in a more of a commander sense where he's going to have some actions that take place based on what what follows in the chapter All right and I want to come to the book but in verse 2 it does talk about those who sleep in the dust will arise so this is not like somewhere along the way this is at the end right mm -hmm. when Michael stands up Travis we talked in previous studies about the day of atonement be, um, and judgment beginning in 1844 and so this talking about Michael standing up is the ending of that judgment uh, but one of the people we talked about the sheep and the goats you know being so if we would use the language of revelation and we've been saying daniel and revelation should be studied together it's it's when uh, the judgment concludes and it is finished, finished. Mm. it is finished yes pedro even in chapter 7 verse 10 the court were seated mm -hmm. yes the judgment started uh, at that point and now when jesus stand up basically court is received all right, now I've got to get to this book because if someone misses everything else, I want them to know how they can get their name in the book. <laughs> so, remember read about the book? Mm -hmm. All right, is that at the end of the verse? Everyone who's found written in the book will be delivered. Mm -hmm. So, what is the book that it's talking about? Well, there are, are there various books, Christian, that are mentioned? Well, this particular book would be the Book of Life. Um, and where do we find out about the book of life? It doesn't call it the book of life, but it's obviously 
the book of life because those whose names are in it are delivered. delivered. They're, delivered. They're going to live, right? Yes. Where do we learn about that? Maharani, could you take us to Revelation? Keep our place there in Daniel. Remember, we're studying these books together. Right at the end, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 and verse 15 talk about a book of life. Would you read starting in Revelation 20 and verse 12? Okay, and I will be reading from the New King James Version. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And then verse 15 of the same chapter. Verse 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mm. Would you say it's good to be written in the book? Amen. Very good. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Very good. <laughs> so now the next question, and this is really important. Some of you might say, Derek, I know that. But let's say someone's watching for the first time. Amy, uh, how do I get my name in the book? Well, would you look at another verse with us in Daniel, excuse me, in Revelation still, chapter 13, verse 8 and 21 verse 27 because it speaks a little more about this book of life. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking. Revelation 13 verse 8 and 21 verse 27. Okay, Thank you. Revelation 13 verse 8 and I'm reading from New King James and it says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And then chapter 21, uh, verse 27, giving us a little more information about this book of life. Chapter 21, verse 27, again, New King James Version. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. So what additional information do you see there, Haiti, that wasn't in, in the previous verse we read in Revelation chapter 20. It tells you certain things that you should abstain from, certain things that you should Oh, it does that do. too, but I'm talking about the book itself. It's called not just the book of life, but the Lamb's, the Lamb's, the Lamb's, Lamb's book Lamb's of life. life. That's yeah. right. Who, who's the Lamb in the book of Revelation? It's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus Lamb is the Lamb, Lamb right? Mm -hmm. You go back to Revelation chapter 4, and of course, even back to the Gospels, when John the Baptist sees the Messiah coming, he shouts out, Oh, the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. That's all part of that ceremonial system pointing to the Messiah to come, right? So, it's not just the book of life. It's the Lamb's, Lamb's book, book of life. life. That means it's the book of Jesus, yes. right? Yeah. The Savior. How do I get my name in the book, Amy? To accept mm -hmm. His death is yours. So, I'm accepting Jesus as my... Savior. The word is redeemed, right? They're going to be redeemed. redeemed. I'm accepting Jesus as my Redeemer, as my Savior, and I'm simply saying, Lord Jesus, yes. write my name. Write my name in your book. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. How many does Jesus want to be saved? All. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Who will be saved? All who, All choose, who choose Jesus. Jesus. All who choose to accept the gift of salvation. Yes. So would it be true then that when we accept the gift of salvation, our name is written in the book? Amen. Amen. So maybe someone's watching and they go, I don't know if I did that. Do it now. I grew up in a Christian home. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. I believe He's coming back again in glory. I want to be ready. I don't know if I ever asked Him to write my name in the book. Do we have to know that we made that decision? Mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Or is it okay to be... <laughs> no. What do you think, Maharani? Do, well, do I need mean, to know? Yeah, I mean, belief is a really strong word. Um, so if you believe something, it influences your actions, your decisions, um, and, and choices in life. And so if someone accepts Jesus um, as their Savior, it influences their entire life to reflect God's character. So would it be possible to say, I don't remember exactly when I did that, but I'm living for Jesus and my heart's surrendered to Jesus, so I know I must have done it somewhere, and so my name's in the book. Or Christian, do you think it's important to, to be able to mark that time? What do you think? Well, you know, the, the Apostle John, in his epistle, 1 John chapter 5, 
um, writes it in the simplest way. I think. Would you I, like to read it? Sure. Tell us where it's found before before we start. Give us. I'm a reading to find from it. the I'm reading from the New King James Version. Yes. And this is First John, chapter five, and I'll read verses eleven and twelve. All right. Give us a moment to find that First John chapter five, eleven and twelve. So this this would be you'd say the way that I get my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The simplest way. Okay. Yes. This is important. Let's hear what it says. It says, verse 11, And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life. And this life, which is eternal life, is in His Son. Verse 12, He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Mm -hmm. So you would say, back to what Amy said, when I say, Jesus, be my Savior, mm -hmm. Jesus redeem to use the word of Daniel right the redeem redeem me forgive me of my sins save me that that's when my name is written in the book of life you know I, I would agree with you Nicole if I have any question about that just do it if I have any question about, I don't know if I ever asked would you say just Asking do it today, Amy. Yeah. And I think we need to do it on a daily basis because the choices that we make can either turn us towards or away from God. It's so I want to challenge that just a little bit, though I understand what you're saying, because I ought to not wake up wondering if my name's in the book. But what can I do every day? Mm -hmm. Invite Jesus to come into your heart. Right. Can I also thank Him yeah. that my name's in the book? Yes. yes. You know, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. writing my name in the book and, and be in my heart, Lord of my life today. Sure, Victoria. You also have to live your life according to the Word of God. We do, and yet that comes out of a living connection with Him, like Maharani was saying, right? And, and this is crucial. We don't get our name written in the book by how we're doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd all be in serious mm -hmm. trouble. Yes. <laughs> For by grace we've been saved through Amen. faith. Amen. But when we have that living connection with Jesus, Maharani said it changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. It changes the way we live. I, one of my favorite preachers said, I'm, I'm not the man I should be, but I praise God I'm not the man I used to be. Amen. I've been changed. Amen. So that transformation for sure does occur. Well, in this same verse, by the way, this is packed. I thought we only had 13 verses, Pedro. <laughs> but there's this time of trouble mm -hmm. such as never was. Michael stands up. What is that talking about? Mm. What is this time of trouble? Is this a spiritual battle or is it literal trouble, Christian? Uh, this is a reference to a time period that Revelation chapter 15 and 16 refer to, the seven last plagues. So it's real, real literal trouble time. Yes. <laughs> By the way, are God's people sheltered from those plagues? Yes. Or yes. do they experience them too with everybody else? They're sheltered. sheltered. They're, They're sheltered, Travis? Well, it says delivered, right? Mm -hmm. the, um, in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 91 is written uh, specifically about that event. And we're, we're only with the eyes will the righteous see the destruction. Mm, is that where a thousand may fall at your right hand, ten thousand? Mm -hmm. Yes, Christian. I might even say, though, that they are sheltered because they're not delivered until the end mm. of the plague. So during the plagues, mm. they truly are sheltered. Um, God shelters them through the trouble and then delivers them at the very end. Mm. Okay, so it may seem, seem like the whole world is falling apart because it is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but our deliverance is sure. Amen. 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 Yes, Pedro. Uh, I think in Psalm 27 we find uh, uh, talking about the, the time of trouble, how we'll be delivered. Would you read that for us? Yes. Uh, this is a Psalm of David. You know, my wife likes to write scripture songs, and she's actually composed quite a few songs for these because we don't know the original tunes from these, but they would sing these songs, right? Are you reading uh, verses... Four and five. Four and five of Psalm 27. Yeah. And how does that read in your Bible? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have desire of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. Mm -hmm. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. Amen. He shall set me high upon a rock. 
Mm. And there's another psalm that says, the Lord is my hiding place, right? mm. which would reinforce, Christian, what you're saying. Uh, things may, may be happening all around us, but if the Lord is our hiding place, mm. we don't need to be afraid. Mm. Now, have you ever met someone that was really afraid of like the end time and the seven last plagues and, mm. um, you know, it's every island moved out of its place? I mean, that's revelation, isn't it? It seems like a fearful time. What word of assurance would you give to someone who feels, oh, I don't want to go through that? Mm. Have you ever met anyone like that? You said, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, what would you say? Maybe a friend comes to you at university and they say, I'm just terrified about all of that with the plagues and the, you know, the elements melting with fervent heat. Of course, that happens later. But you know, just fearful about this time of trouble such as never was. Yeah, well, one assurance that we have in the Bible is uh, the Israelites during the time of Moses, um, they also went through a series of ten plagues in their time, and mm. God delivered His people. You know, everyone around them that didn't trust in the Lord, they perished and they did suffer the consequences of the plague, but those people who followed God and had them in their hearts were completely saved from any of that destruction. And back to the salvation issue, the tenth plague, when the death angel flew over, mm. what, what did they have to do if they were choosing God's redemption? The oh. lamb was slayed, which is, you know, lambs can't save you. It's pointing forward to? Jesus. Jesus. Lamb of God, right? Yeah. Jesus. And where did they put the blood? Door door door. Do you know anyone who chose to go in was protected? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Including the firstborn, so he was... He, he was glad that his father yeah. put the blood over the doorpost, right? There's, we could spend a lot of time there, but we won't. Mm. All right, so <laughs> here is this time of trouble, but if we are standing under the protection of our Savior, mm. we don't need to be afraid. Amen. Amen. Something else is going to happen, though. Uh, verse 2, and Jonathan, would you read that for us in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2? Michael stands up. We've considered that symbolism. And uh, there is a time of trouble, but what do you read in verse 2? All right, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm. Is there any other prophet in the Bible who speaks of death as a sleep? You say, well, is Jesus a prophet? Yeah, well, he's prophet, priest, and king, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And Messiah. Amen. Does Jesus speak of death as a sleep? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. where, where does Jesus speak of death as a sleep? In John chapter 11. Should we take a moment? Is it important? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have misunderstandings about what happens when we die, don't they? John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14. Amy, would you be able to read that for us? This is a great story of God raising a man named Lazarus from the dead. But let's look at verses 11 to 14. John chapter 11, verses 11 to 14, and this is the New King James Version. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, then he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. And then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So Jesus speaks of hmm. death as a sleep. Mm -hmm. If death is a sleep, resurrection would be Wake up. Waking, up. waking someone up from their sleep. Mm -hmm. A lot more we could look at there. But in this passage where it speaks about those who sleep in the dust shall awake, it speaks about two resurrections in Daniel. Mm -hmm. Is that found anywhere else in Scripture? Christian? Yes, it is. In the, in the New Testament, Jesus himself spoke of that in John chapter 5. Let's take a look at that. You know, I always like to hear what Jesus has to say. As a follower of Jesus, what he says is important. And so he's spoken about death as a sleep. He's spoken about waking people up from their sleep, resurrection. Uh, what does he say in John chapter 5? Will you be reading verse 25? 28 and 29, could you read those three verses for us? Sure, I'm reading from the New uh, King James Version. John chapter 5, verse 25 says, most, most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. 
And then verse 28, he says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear mm -hmm. his voice. Mm -hmm. Verse 29, And come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so much there. I just want to speak to our Hope Sabbath School members again, because you've got to understand Revelation chapter 20. So remember, hopebiblestudy.org, chapter by chapter, Daniel and Revelation, speaks about those two resurrections being separated by a thousand years, right? Mm -hmm. right. Can't go into all of those details here. But here it speaks about being uh, raised from the dead. What's the timing, Sean, of that resurrection? It speaks about Michael standing up. Are there any other Bible verses that speak about when that resurrection takes place. I think Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? Yes. Let's take a look at that together. Uh, verses 13, we could read all the way to the end of the chapter, but let's read 13 to 16, which, uh, as Sean pointed out, talks about the timing. We'd learn it from Daniel, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Daniel says, Michael stands up, <laughs> time of trouble, resurrection. But let's see how the Apostle Paul writes to Christians in Thessalonica. Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Um, I like verse 17, that we who are alive and remain will be caught up, but mm. I'm just going to have to hold it right there. It happens when Christ returns in glory. So Michael stands hmm. up, returns in glory, resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. And it says gonna, archangel. Ah, it <laughs> speaks about the voice of the archangel. It also speaks in verse 13 about those who sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's using this same language that we find in Daniel chapter 12. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause and make this a little more personal if I can. Is there someone that you want to talk to on that day hmm. mm -hmm. to tell them how gracious God was to you. Amen. Amen. Is there someone comes to your mind, Nicole, that you want to talk to on that My day? My mother. What do you want to tell your mother? Thank you for praying for me because I'm here with you now. Now what some may not know because we get lots of Hope Sabbath School members joining all along, is there something important that your mother didn't know? Tell us that very briefly if you would. I mean she did she, of course, she's been, she's been asleep for 20 years, um, but she didn't know that I would come around and give my, my life to Christ the way I have. And when she passed and she fell asleep, I was in a different place than I am now. I was definitely, definitely much more worldly than I am today um, in terms of my activities and my behaviors. And I think she would be very pleased that her prayers were heard on high and that I've turned my life around and I'm now a, 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 a disciple for Christ. Somebody say amen. 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 Isn't that awesome? I think there's going to be a whole lot of people happy. Some others could say, I have something. Maybe someone watching in somewhere around the world saying, I have someone because I want to tell them that their prayers for me were not wasted. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, sometimes prayers are answered after a person falls asleep. Mm -hmm. I yeah. do believe those prayers are not wasted. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to keep going here. We're just uh, moving on to verse 4 of Daniel chapter 12. Why do you think this instruction is given to Daniel? Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, and verse 9 repeats it again. And J Jason, would you read that for us? Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Daniel chapter 12, verses 4 and verse 9. But you, Daniel... Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And then verse 9, And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. 
Mm. Now, there is a difference between the time of the end and the end of time. The end of time is... Jesus. That's it, right? That's the end of time. But there is a period before the end of time, which is referred to in Scripture as the time of the end. Why would such an important book be sealed up for many, many, many centuries? We're, we're talking 6th century B.C. until the closing part of Earth's history. Why would the angel give that instruction, seal it up until the time of the end? I thought all scripture was given by inspiration of God and is profitable. So mm -hmm. help me with that. Did it mean that no one should really study it? Is that what it meant? No. Seal it up? What do you think, Sean? I just think there's things that had to be fulfilled for you to fully understand. I shouldn't use fully, but for you to understand or comprehend a little bit more. So it's almost like you have this letter that's written and it's on its way to get to you and things have transpired and by the time you get it, it makes more sense because you've seen, you know, things being fulfilled. You know, some people have told me that you really only fully understand prophecy after it's fulfilled <laughs> and you look back. Now, I think we can see the signs, for example, yeah. but is it possible that we don't have it all 100% right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we might say, I need to keep studying because maybe something's... Uh, a little different from what I thought. Uh, Travis? Um, yeah, well, the prophecies here are specifically talking about the judgment uh, part of Daniel that's sealed up. And that, as we've studied through, through Daniel, um, referred to the time of the end when the warning would go out even in Revelation chapter 14 that judgment has come. And so it says that knowledge, in, in verse 4, knowledge will increase. And literature proves this to be true. From 1798 on, the knowledge of the judgment part of Daniel, 2300 days, hundreds and hundreds of books have been written about that. Prior to that, there's hardly one piece of literature to even explain that. It's an amazing revelation. And that um, <coughs> resurgence of interest in studying Bible yeah. prophecy was across the globe, That's right? Right. right. Uh, people around the world with this interest, this sense that we're living in the time of the end. Mm. Jason. That also came about because of various technological advances. So one of the mm. reasons you didn't have a lot of books on these types of things because you didn't have that many books, period. So history also played a role in this as well. Mm. Mm. So you've answered my question when the prophecies were unsealed. Uh, did Daniel understand any of this when he was writing it down? <laughs> Little, <laughs> maybe. This. Oh, the angel explained some of it to yeah. him, didn't yes. he? Yeah. yeah. Yes? But some of it made him feel sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It made him feel weak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be fair to say he didn't understand it all, right? Right. But it was still revealed to him. Mm. But that makes me feel better because I don't understand it all either. <laughs> but did he understand the big picture? Yeah. Yes. yes. What did he know for sure? God wins. God, God, God wins, right? Yes. Most high God rules. Yep. Mm. God wins. He's going to set up a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Saints of the Most High will inherit the kingdom forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Amy? And just thinking about not understanding and understanding, it's a great comfort to me to recognize that the same Holy Spirit who inspired Daniel to write this is the same Holy Spirit that is helping me to understand mm -hmm. and will open my eyes and, and my insight into what God has mm -hmm. to, to tell me. Can you think of a promise that supports what Amy just said? Mm -hmm. That the same Holy Spirit who inspired the prophets to write wants to help us to understand. Can anybody think of a Bible text that supports that? Jonathan, I, I agree with you, Amy, you're right. I just want to know where that's found in the scriptures. Jonathan, where are you thinking? Uh, Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, okay? Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite uh, scripture songs. Okay. Uh, but it, you're saying this shows that God wants to help us. Yeah. to understand what the Holy Spirit has inspired someone to write. Will you read for us uh, from Jeremiah 33 and verse 3? Sure, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Call to me, and I will answer you, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Okay, so uh, now he could give you a vision or dream, mm. right? But he could also point you mm. to the revelation that's already been given, mm. right? Uh, so that's a great one. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. 
I was thinking of another one, Christian. Um, in John chapter 16, mm. verse 13. That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> That's one, a promise of Jesus, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Jesus John, himself spoke John these chapter words. John 16, mm -hmm. and, and uh, verse 13. Yes, I, I could read that for you. Uh, it's, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Jesus himself said in John 16, verse 13, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. You know, I remember one time someone said to me, I don't need the Bible anymore, I have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh -huh. Like, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the prophets to write this down, and he's not going to tell you his own things. In fact, doesn't it say that he will, the things that I have said, where is that? that he will show you these things, not his own things. So he's going to point us back to Scripture. He's going to help us to understand uh, what has been revealed. So that's a precious promise, isn't it, uh, for each one of us. Well, we want to go to the closing revelation uh, here in the book. Notice Daniel, Revelation, go together. Hmm. We're in Daniel chapter 12, beginning with verse 5. Daniel chapter 12. Christian, would you read that for us, starting in verse 5? Uh, I would wish it just got really simple, but Daniel's <laughs> not done sharing some revelation with us. Let's see what he says. Again, I'm reading from the New King James Version, Daniel chapter 12, verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. Verse 6, And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Verse 7, Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Verse 8, Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. Verse 11, And after the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is, is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Verse 13, But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So it starts with the time and the times and half a time, and then it throws in 1,290 days, which if we know Bible prophecy key is 1,290 years. And just in case you didn't have it all settled yet, I'm going to throw in a 1,335 years. And you say, oh, I guess there's more that we need to learn. But where have we heard the time, times, and half a time or dividing of time. Where have we heard that before, Pedro? We found this in Daniel and Revelation, referring to the time of the period of uh, Rome, papal Rome, uh, destroying. The, the little people. horn power, little right? Horn power, yeah. Okay. And in Revelation, in Revelation, is it 12, 14, where the earth provides a place for the woman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's that talking about? That, then we've got to study Daniel and Revelation together, where... Uh, lest the faithful would all perish, the earth, not the sea, but the earth, that means where there weren't any people, right, mm -hmm. opens up and provides shelter mm -hmm. for the people of God. Many see that as, a, as being fulfilled in, in the new world where many pilgrims came seeking religious freedom uh, to what we now call the United States of America, which grew up where there weren't any people. By the way, uh, there's some things in Revelation about this beast that speaks like a lamb and then starts uh, acting like a dragon, right? <laughs> so, there's so much more we have to learn, but what I want to ask you is, 
Oh, I don't think I understand all of that. Um, is there a promise that would be an encouragement to people as we're wrapping up our study of saying, oh, now more things that I need to figure out, 1290, 1335. Um, look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 16 and verse 4. Christian read earlier from the words of Jesus a little later in that chapter, right, in verse 13. Maharani? Would you read verse 4 for us? All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Um, but these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told, told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. So I'm not going to tell you everything right now. Mm. But don't be stressed out about that, mm. okay? In fact... The Apostle Paul, Victoria, maybe you could find 1 Corinthians for us, chapter 13 and verse 12. In this wonderful chapter about love, and that's not just talking about human love between uh, one and another, but the agape love of God, you know. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. love. The greatest is love, and that is the love of God, the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. And if we have a relationship with Him, then his love can be revealed through us. But I want you to note, Victor, if you would, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 12. What does that say? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also am known. Now they tell me that uh, back in those days they didn't have uh, the kind of mirrors we have today. Uh, do you know how the mirrors were constructed back then? It was a metal. Yeah. Polished. polished metal, right? Yeah. Polished metal. And, uh, oh, I think I see a face there. But I only see it dimly, right? It's not like, whoo. <laughs> I see it dimly. And Paul's saying that's kind of how it is with us. We see, but we don't see everything. Mm -hmm. So how do we learn to live with that? Amy? That we see, but we don't see everything. Through faith. Mm. Faith and trust. Faith and trust mm. in Jesus. Right, Christian? You know, one of the, the promises that speaks to me the most in this context is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse Can 7. Can we read that together? Give us a moment to find it. This is the Apostle Paul writing to a young Hope Sabbath School member. <laughs> <laughs> he was a young... Uh, man passionate about sharing the gospel, right? And um, in this letter, this is kind of a long text message. Hmm. What does he say in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7? Yes, um, reading from the New King James Version, Paul wrote, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And I love to think as opposed to powerless, you know, as we saw of Satan's lies, so God is speaking truth and power and of love, like we just read in 1 Corinthians 13, and of a sound mind. So God is promising a sound mind as opposed to confusion. Mm -hmm. So God wants to speak clarity so that we can understand the things that are to come. So would you say then, even if I don't understand everything <laughs> in the book of Daniel or Revelation or somewhere else, by the way, I am so thankful for the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, which even those are quite deep, especially the Gospel of John. But uh, we ought to go to the simple, clear teaching of Scripture as well as wrestling with some of these complex portions. But I hear Christians saying, don't give up, right? Keep praying, keep studying, studying right? Be diligent to show yourself approved unto God. And uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal us into all will truth. lead us into all truth. truth. Does that mean we'll know everything about everything? No. What does it mean into all truth? I think Jesus is the way and the truth. Ah, so you'd say it would lead us to Him. Um, and to truth that He wants us to know for mm -hmm. today. You know, we call that present truth, right, John? Mm -hmm. Present truth. Uh, he'll, he'll lead us to the truth we need to know, but He is the truth mm -hmm. that the Spirit leads us to. Thank you. Travis? Mm -hmm. We can be confident that He'll lead us into all the necessary truth to equip us to be in heaven. All right, because that's the goal, right? That's right. So, we've got a few minutes left. 
most important lesson you've learned today? Victoria, what's the most important lesson you've learned from our study today? That we don't have to fear um, during the trial and tribulation because we have Christ on our side. Amen. Mm -hmm. Time of trouble such as never was, instead of being afraid, it's like, hallelujah, it's almost over. Amen. Amen. And I am hidden, right? I'm in that hiding place under his tabernacle. Someone else, most important lesson you've learned. Maharani? Um, yeah, I mean, for the book of Daniel, you think of like symbols and all these things and numbers, but everything points back to Jesus. So it's really simple. Hallelujah. To the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. To the one that the ancients look forward to. We, we look back, we have a big advantage, don't we? Look back to another lesson. Haiti. I see throughout this book kind of chaos, honestly. I see that even in the time of Daniel, he went from one ruler to another, his own kingdom to the Babylonian kingdom to the Medes and the Persians. And then all the visions are about the same thing. One kingdom, a different kingdom, one ruler, another ruler, the king of the north, the king of the south. And it's just chaos and disorder. But one day, God is going to come and bring yeah. peace and stability. <laughs> and that is good news. Uh, Jonathan? Sure, yeah, that God wants us to understand. You know, he, he gives us these things. We may be like Daniel and we, we are ready to faint. We're ready, we, we see all these things are like, I don't know what, how to make sense of things. But as long as we trust him, pray, come to him with, with our questions, he wants us to know and he'll give us what we need to know it, when we need to know it, for where we are in history. And that, uh, my friends, is good news. Amen. As we continue our study, don't forget hopebiblestudy.org. If you want to study Daniel and Revelation, powerful lessons between those two books. Uh, we'll learn that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is the one who was and is and is to come. Mm. And as uh, was pointed out, when our security is in Him, we do not need to fear. We can face the future with confidence. But if you've never asked Him to write your name in His book, say, Jesus, be my Savior. Can I appeal to you to do it today? Or if you have a loved one, will you talk to her today? Send a text message to him today and say, while there's time, accept the gift of salvation through Jesus so that you can face the future filled with hope and joy. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for this precious series of studies. Thank you for using the prophet Daniel for preserving the scripture for us today. Thank you for the hope that is ours in you. May we not keep that hope to ourselves, but may we share that hope with everyone we meet. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. What an amazing journey. You say, I know so much more. Well, I'm glad you've learned, but I hope you've learned most of all that the most high God who rules wants to be your savior and welcome you into his eternal kingdom. Take that joy. Go out and be a blessing to those around you. Thank you.